In this video, I'm going to install Y access for bear upgrade. I went out and bought some lock nuts, so hopefully I, this time I would be able to assemble this bit. I have a, quite a few things on my table. I have my collection of metric nuts and pieces of my 3D printer at the back. Uh, let's try and keep following in the instructions and um, let's hope that uh, this time it's going to be more successful than the, than the last time. So I need to put in lock knot in here. So lock, lock knot goes this way and yeah this is roughly like this oh and then it just uh, goes in yeah and now it is perfectly uh, aligned because it fits into the pocket uh, pocket length wise i'm just gonna try and use this random ball to see if that fits Should probably get a screwdriver. Yeah, this actually works now. So uh, we have that, and I actually need um, M25 uh, bolt. So I'm going to take this out, and I'm pretty sure this is either 40 millimeter or 45 millimeter one that I'm going to. No, this is ah, this is 45 and I need a 25 millimeter bolt, which is this one. Just going to screw that one in a little bit. This prevent losing the lock knot. Yeah, it seems to be the, my uh, my print seems to be a bit tighter than this pack, so I don't think I'm going to lose the lock knot. So now um, I need to put a T knot where the two um, rails are, and it goes at the bottom. Oh, this is not good. I'm sliding all of the existing T nuts around, uh, but I think the one I put here is uh, slid enough that I can move it around. Okay, so uh, I'm going to tighten this idler mount and tighten them enough just to prevent them from sliding. So I'm gonna get my um, M5 eight millimeter bolts. Yeah, I got exactly three of them. So let's start with. I'll just I'll just bring the whole frame in a little bit. Hope this is visible enough. And that, that's the greased bearings that are sitting here. Maybe I can move them out of the way. Maybe I'll start with the, with the bottom T-knot. Okay, that's holding. And now I can slide this around at the top. One and two. Okay, that seems to be holding more or less in place. That's what we want. Now I am going to use the angle tool or measuring tool to align the uh, smooth rods. Okay, so I just need to adjust the position of 
the rod holder so I'm, I'm, I'm going to tighten here this just a little bit so it's holding in place and then I'm gonna do it on this side a bit more um, in, in in the source code with CAD files and or the draw, drawings they're actually um, uh, exact measurements on how to on the distances between this part and rods and everything so uh, I think I'm going to double check this at some point during assembly So yeah, uh, well, I'm, now I'm just going to take a screwdriver and tighten everything again. Maybe I can move this a little bit closer to the edge of the frame. This seems to, uh, the, the slider seems to be sliding just a little bit. Oh yeah, I think I already tightened this enough so it doesn't move. Now, uh, now I need to loosen it, move it closer, tighten it. Okay, yeah, this one seems to be snug. And this seems to be snug too. So yeah, let's do it on this side. Just move it here first. And first I'm going to use the bit alone. So when I tighten it, there's still some slack. So when I come back with the measuring tool, I can still slide the rods around a little bit. I just need to align measuring too. Okay. Now the same thing on the other side. Oh, I need to move it a little bit closer just so it's a bit snug. a bit too snug now it's too close okay this here to use some force to oh actually yeah I needed to use some force to pop the rods in the uh, rod holder oh yeah I think um, I printed this thing a little bit out of spec so th uh, the thing is uh, a bit slightly tighter than they should be but uh, I'm hoping this is not a huge deal. Okay, so let's say this seems to be done. 
Okay. Let's go to the next step. So for this side, uh, I need to also slide uh, not in the lower channel. Um, okay. I, just in case, I'm going to tighten the rods again. And I'm going to turn around the frame so, um, so uh, I can see where the knot is going. So that's another T knot going in there. Okay, there we go. So this is it for now for, now for this knot. Now uh, we're getting to the uh, back of the um, plate. The only issue is, uh, I think I need to wipe it a little bit, there is some uh, grease that got transferred from the rails. I printed the holder for bear upgrade, so I think I'm going to use it instead of the original Prusa holder. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to um, install cages for the be bearings first. So I need to install cages here and here, but before that I'm just going to uh, remove the uh, remove this clip or belt holder. Oh, and I need to hold the knot below so I can unscrew it. Oh, and there was a washer. Okay. Another issue is that um, I bought this whole toolkit before, like back in uh, June, and then I got really busy with work, so I wasn't be able to assemble it. By the time I finally able to get to assembling it, I, uh, I'm just gonna wash this thing. I think a little bit of water is not gonna ruin it, especially since this is aluminum. So by the time I got around uh, assembling the bear kit, the new version uh, came out. And so I used all uh, new instructions and of course I'm missing some uh, parts. Um, but it's fine because I have a bunch of, uh, I have some extra uh, bits for M3 and M5 hardware. So I'm using that and I'm going to use, for this I'm going to use lock nuts. I think I will, well I didn't have lock nuts, I went and got them today, that's a whole different story. Uh, I'm gonna use some washers and I also will use um, M12, uh, well, M12, uh, M3 by 12 screw. So I'm hoping this is this pile of hardware would be enough. So let's follow instructions. I'm going to put the lock nuts in here like this oh okay yeah so since my print is a bit tight it's going to be um, a little bit challenging to press them in i think i'm gonna use this these so i'm just gonna adjust the grips so like this and then if i plan things correctly i can just sort of align the lock knots. And then I'll just press it in with the grips like this. There we go. One more time. I think it's almost completely aligned. Oh yeah, uh, not quite, but let me see if it's fixable. Mm. 
Yeah, it is, sort of. Yeah, so it's in there before I'm going to um, try anything. Let's try and tighten it and see if it evens out. Oh, this, there's quite a lot of the bolt is visible here or it's starting to be visible so I think this is the part when I actually probably should use power tools to just make things go a little bit faster so let's see if our bolt is going to do anything and now this is not working because it kind of pushes out <laughs> the knot oh this is not good so maybe as an alternative strategy I'm going to hold the bolt unscrew the knot Yeah, okay, I may have ruined this one. Yeah, okay, I need to, I will have to print another one of these. And it's probably like, this is probably completely broken now. So, um, I'm gonna put this aside for now. So let's try an alternative approach. I'm just going to Screw the knot like this, if I can. I can screw it in straight. I mean, it would be a lot easier if I can just do this and head it well with this like like so. But uh, it is upside down, so this is not optimal. So I need to screw this thing from the back which is also not optimal so we don't have a lot of optimal options uh, what if I just um, instead of using 25 millimeter knot um, instead of using 25 millimeter bolt I would just take a 30 millimeter one Screw it like so. Okay, I'm I'm so using power tool for this. So I'm using slightly longer bolt. I'm using. I'm gonna start manually so I don't uh, break the channel. Then I'm gonna okay. Uh, we have the um, bolt sticking out a little bit and now I'm going to screw the knot in a little bit and now I think I have no choice but to try and screw the bolt in by hand at least it should align with the knot and maybe even I'll use my other automotive pliers to try and get this thing in the inside the channel.
so here I, now I screwed the bolt real close and now I have to be really careful so uh, I don't break the channel I think uh, I may have already done something wrong because uh, it looks like the knot isn't exactly aligned Um, so let's see if I just hold it like this and then try and screw it in. Maybe, maybe it will align itself. Yeah. I'm gonna first adjust it to the so the knot is roughly in the position of where the channel is and then I'll I'll just try and screw it. Oh, no, it's it's still moving, so I need to really hold it. With some pliers, and then just keep screwing it in. I think I need to hold it a little bit more. Yeah, so not, now it's not moving and now I really can pull it in the channel. Yeah, I think um, actually I, I believe I used the wrong, um, wrong ball, ball to begin with. It's supposed to be uh, M3 by 18 and I took M3 by 25. So yeah, I, I can definitely do this with the um, M3 by 25 bolt, the M3 by 30 bolt is way overkill and I'm basically just rotating it like this for nothing. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna put this one back. Yeah, and I will have to use 18. Let's see if 25. No. No, I, I was using 18. I just grabbed 30 millimeter bolt for no particular reason. Uh, okay, so now let's try and do the other side of this thing. So the bolt is sticking out here, going to thread it on a knot by hand. Maybe I, what I can do is align the knot and then maybe pull the bolt a little bit. I'll get back to my automotive pliers. Just kind of lock in when I'm holding the knot, like so. Let's see how this is going. It doesn't seem to have slipped or damaged any of the walls of the print, so I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, and it's in. So I'll just, yeah. Okay, so that's one, one uh, 
be successfully finished. Now let's do it for this one. And then I will have to I will have to reprint the other piece uh, because yeah, I kind of broke it. Okay, where are my automotive wires? They're locked in, and then I I'm tightening the tightening this thing by hand. Could have probably used uh, twenty millimeter uh, bolt instead of twenty five millimeter bolt. I would have to do a lot less tightening. Probably it might stick long enough, just long enough to. Okay, let's check how it, the, how the not going. Yeah, it's going fine. It's kind of halfway in. It's going all the way in. Yeah, and I hear the crackling, which is, which means stop doing what you're doing immediately. You know there is uh, wrenches with the torque setting, and they start to make sounds when you over exceed that torque. So. This is a much simpler system. The printed piece starts to make that sound. So I printed this item standing like this, and I'm not sure it's the right decision. Maybe I should have printed it like this, because uh, all the lines, uh, like all the torquing lines are in the same direction as the bolt that's holding it, and it's probably gonna be holding this less well and there is a risk of this uh, piece splitting like in the middle. So uh, yeah, maybe I should consider, um, if it does that, I will uh, print it like this or maybe I can try and mod modify this piece so it can be printed like that li line at the top. I just need to add a little bit material here so this part would be printable. And like the, it would be flat and it would be easier to print it flat on the bed. Okay, so uh, let's see how far this thing goes. Actually, it goes far enough. I don't even need uh, 25 millimeter uh, bolt. All I need is my 18 millimeter bolt. Yeah, because um, it's going to go through this thing and then it's going to go through here just for pull, pulling the um, pulling the bolts in. 18 millimeter is plenty. Yeah, I could have saved myself a lot of screwing back and forth. Yeah, I could have saved myself a lot of screwing. Okay, so let's see how this one gonna go. Okay, I'm holding it like so, and now just Torquing it manually. And it seems to be uh, going in without twisting. So, okay. Now I can just finish. So I have printed the other piece and I am going to try and <coughs> insert uh, the last two lock nuts in it.
now I'm attaching this to hold the the knot and I'll just uh, keep tightening it until the ribs fall away okay now I can untighten this Last one. Okay, that should be enough. This is done. Okay, so let's try and insert, insert all of the bearings. I think it might be a little bit more, oh. It is really easy. They just slide in and they don't move back and forth because there is this ridge that holds them in place. That's it. So uh, now I going to move to the belt holder. I want to see how if I can can uh, reuse the original belt holder or if I yeah should probably be able to reuse it. It's about the same length. At the same time I need one of the square knots. So let me see if this one has a good thread. Yeah I can thread it. Okay, so uh, I need M18 screw, so I need to insert this square knot in the knot holder, which is here. I think actually I may want to use um, grips. First, I'm going to clean out the um, hole a little bit with dental tools, and I'll just clean up the texture so I can um, insert the not a little bit and mostly evenly I hope maybe that's not quite maybe that's not quite as feasible as I want it to be okay so uh, actually I'm gonna use my vise for that I will insert the knot as evenly as I can and then I'll just put this piece in the vise and I'll close the vise uh, hoping that it still, it's, it still stays even in there 
let's see how it is right now. Yeah, right now it's straight up, standing straight there. And I'll just slowly and evenly apply pressure. And now, uh, once the piece is uh, farther along, I can just uh, take the vice out and then I can just use something like a driver bit and press it down further. Seems like looking uh, through the hole, it seems like um, the piece is a little bit too high so I need to keep pressing down so it will align with the hole on the inside there. Now it's aligned. It's, I don't know how, how well it's visible in the camera. So now that it is aligned I can use my uh, M3 by 18 millimeter bolt and I just uh, screw it in through here. See how far I can go and see if it um, if it grabs the knot. So when I went all the way I feel the resistance. It means that uh, the um, the bolt has grabbed the knot so I can back it out and keep it separately. Uh, okay, so uh, for uh, now I need to work on the Euler tensioner and the problem I'm having is that I don't have the 16 millimeter pin so I 3D printed a 17 millimeter plastic pin and I want to try it out and see how long it might uh, last. And you see um, it's still uh, the pin I made it's still a little bit uh, too um, thick but I think if I press it in carefully I might be able to get away with that so I'm gonna use my vise again it appears to be big enough so first I'm just actually I'm not even going to put the, the sprocket in Uh, I'm just gonna tighten this so everything is kind of held together and in this case the um, idler part it has uh, a bearing inside of it so there is no need for the internal piece to spin if it's uh, like if it doesn't move it's totally fine so I am just applying a little bit of pressure that pushes the pin through and now I'm just kind of sliding in the, the idler bit just in the right spot I hope realize it would have been much easier if I were able to keep the stationary but now it appears that um, the bearing is just in the right spot and I'm going to Press it on and see what's going to happen. Okay, and that supposedly is it. So, um, still need to press this thing a bit further in. You see, uh, maybe I'll try the uh, much stronger part of the vise on the other side and see if I can do anything about it. This is also I 3D printed the part that broke on the vise so I'm not sure how much I can pull without this part breaking. This is sort of like my initial prototype that I'm not entirely certain of. This is enough for the tensioner to work properly, but I still don't like how uneven this thing is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take a 
driver a bit and press this thing on a bit more or um, what else I can do is I can grab a um, a short short uh, M3 ball like the 10 millimeter one right here and I'm going to press it against the idler in, in the vise and hope that I can totally get away with that so something like this oh yeah let me try and touch it just in any way poss possible or maybe I can do this I'm not gonna use uh, pliers I'm just gonna get pincers for this so something like that Oh, there we go. And now uh, the pin looks like it's wedged on both sides. Okay, the next part is I need to install the motor. Okay, so for the next uh, step, I need to extract the motor first from the old printer, which I brought here. So let's start of getting these two bolts and two bolts out. Uh oh, I may have broken the. I may have broken the switch. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's so many things broken about this. Okay, so I'm going to it, I twisted it here and it kind of cracked, so I'm going to need a new switch. I'm going to loosen these nuts and then carefully take out the motor. I'll switch to a smaller one since uh, I don't have to torque this anymore. Okay, there we go. There's the motor. And I also have an extra fan for using this in um, 
so motors don't overheat uh, when I'm using this in an enclosure. So I'm hoping I be I will be able to keep the fan in this configuration. Yeah, there's nothing really holding the nothing really interfering with the motor, at least not uh, from cursory looking at the at the images. Yeah, I don't have yellow. I don't have a um, hole sensor going anywhere. Just kind of put... Uh... Oh, actually, I, I did uh, solder it. it. Now it fell off. Maybe I should not have bothered with the, uh, with the yellow cable since it's not connected. I was hoping to connect it at some point, but I never did. So I am just, I already took a um, photo of this nest of wires and uh, I'm just going to disconnect. The access here and the power over there. This is my kind of daughter board for all of the fans and stuff. So, um, I have liberated the motor. I can probably, if I cut this, I will get the wires out. This looks like a har uh, wire harness because I used wire harness tape for this. Okay, so we have our motor and wiring, which is probably will have to change in some way. It's probably going to be a different length or something like that. I'm going to install new switch because, yeah, I managed to put a crack on this one right here. So after I install new switch, I will have to... Um, I don't think it's going to be easy to solder it, so I'm going to do it uh, right now. Here's my bag with end stop switches. Here's my soldering iron, the thing I use to clean it. Solder, power box for the iron. Helping hands. Uh, this can use this as a base. Hoping it's not gonna twist if I drop some shoulder on it. I am going to cut the harness. Unfortunately, I already know the wiring, so it's this should be less painful than the last time I had to do it. And I'm just going to plug the power in, get the end switch, so it goes like this, same orientation, I need my heat shrink, cut the heat shrink. Maybe have a cleaner cut. Put heat drink on each wire. Let's see if... Oh, and I just got heat drink for nothing because it's too small. Let's backtrack, find an appropriately sized heat drink. Yep, that will go. 
then yeah I got too confident and and then I forgot a step so now I'm going to cut this hitch ring again maybe I should just cut it check that everything would work yeah that seems reasonable then get another one oh, probably use scissors for that I think my cutters are getting a little bit dull and let's cut another part maybe not throw it in the garbage That's done. Now I'm going to uh, twist the cables on each uh, end stop, twist the wires around each contact, just following this one. Maybe I can just do this for the reference. And I think I desperately need my small pliers to just twist this. And I still have my two other wires that I'm trying to keep in the harness at the same time. So it's... Uh, green then it's black once I uh, pull the metal wire through I use the pliers to, to uh, I want to twist it but I just kind of separated the wire so now it's going to be more difficult Yeah, I'm doing the same mistake. Maybe I should not hold this in the harness for now and just kind of twist the wires so they don't fall off. Okay, we have two. Now let's do the third. And actually, wait. These are now different lengths and that is super annoying I'll probably gonna have some uh, extra wiring at the end so uh, that's why I'm being so cavalier and I'm going to cut this wire so they're now they are the same length now I'm gonna strip them again for about a um, centimeter. So yeah, now everything is the same length. And let's do the wiring. So it's green, then it's black. I'm trying to, I'm trying to twist it so that um, I don't spread out the wire core and I don't put insulation too close to the spot that I'm going to solder. Okay, that might be enough. Comparing to this, I'll do the, the red one. Same idea. I pull, pulled through the core of the wire while leaving maybe like three millimeters on the other side with the insulation. Now I'm twisting it. 
Okay, so I think I got this thing ready to be soldered. This is how the, the original look uh, looks and this is how the new one looks. This thing seems to be similar enough. So now I'm just going to take this, turn on my soldering iron. I realize I made a mistake, I didn't solder the ends, oh well. So I set it to uh, 360 degrees. Let's clean the iron first. Let's see if it's ready. It is ready. The other problem is this thing, the, the end stop connector conducts heat really well. I don't think I'm supposed to solder it. So I kind of need to do this quickly before uh, I damage plastic housing. And let's do the last one. I think both plastic housing of the end stop and also the uh, wire uh, insulation. Now I'm going to, since I'm too lazy to go and get a heat gun, I'm going to drop the temperature to, what, 200 degrees and while the iron is cooling down, I'm going to take the heat shrink and then try and insulate all of the connectors. Okay, so I got this. Okay, I'm grabbing the end stop. I'm just gonna use the iron to do it and supposedly this shouldn't burn. This thing is a lot cooler now. Yeah, 200 degrees only. Oh, and I see I made another mistake. I, I did not cut uh, the heat shrink evenly, so it doesn't quite fit to the end of the end stop, but I think for our purposes it might be enough. Not super neat, but uh, that will do. I should probably clean the, the end of the soldering iron first, so I don't leave any residue like I just did. Okay, and let's do the last one. Okay, now I'm going to turn it off. I need three um, 18 millimeter. Okay, let's see how we're doing this. Are these, that looks like 18 millimeter. A millimeter bolts so I'm should I should be happy and now we need to um, connect this so uh, I have two 18 millimeter bolts and one one 10 millimeter bolt and I hope I can keep the fan on the motor so okay this is facing the other direction then so the wiring goes downwards and this is goes like this and while I'm pressing here a uh, 10 millimeter bolt goes here and two 18 millimeter bolt go there so let me try and do that And now these bolts go here. And I'm pushing the motor against the, so I'm pushing the motor against the bolts and my wiring goes faces down. And yeah.
Okay, now I'm going to tighten everything with the screwdriver. Now let's see what the next step is. So I need to put a motor and stop mount. Am I using the correct part? Okay, I printed a wrong part. My part does not have uh, an end stop mount that I need. Okay, so it uh, turns out I did not uh, print the wrong part. I forgot to print uh, Y motor and stop mount, which goes in here. And by looking at it, everything is uh, screwed in directly in uh, plastic. I decided not to reuse uh, bolts from the end stop because one of them is stripped and the other one I suspect is going to get stripped relatively quickly. So I'm just going to use brand new ones. It is time for my M2 fastener box. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking for M212. This kind of looks like it. Or actually this is it. Yeah, I would rather use stainless steel as it, there is less chance for it to get uh, rusty. I don't know where I'm going to put my printer. So I'm getting two uh, bolts that these screw the screws go directly into plastic, so it's important not to over tighten them. Uh, there's the slip. And. I just want to see how this thing looks. It is to install the, the and stop like so. So the, uh, yeah, it's, and it's already fitting into the uh, groove. So uh, the bottom bottom aligns with the lip here, and there's more chance that it gets pressed. But you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, so I'm supposed to remove the lever, but. Uh, I'm not entirely certain that I um, set up the carriage correctly, uh, so uh, I'm just gonna test this whole thing with the lever on, and if everything works well, then uh, I'm just gonna pull it off. Yeah, this seems to be the right size of the drive bit, and I'm going to So I'm going to attach the end stop first and then attach the whole thing to the um, motor mount. Oh, this thing is not going straight at all. Uh, oh, I hope this is going to work. I'm just gonna tighten this enough so the screws grab onto the body of the end stop, but that's about as far as this is going to go. Yeah, that's it. Oh, actually, this thing is there's still some way to go. Never mind, just keep going until there is no gap here. One and two, yeah, ah, just a little bit more so the end stop doesn't move around. Let's see, yeah, that's enough. This is where I'm stopping. So now this goes like, like this. And I need a M3 by 18, 
screw to attach the hand stop point to the mount. So let's see if this is. Yep. And then I'm going to put this in here. And there is a, a little lip here and a little dent in here. So this thing kind of aligns perfectly. And I'm going to put everything down so I can. to apply some pressure. Okay, there's still a bit some play. Just gonna keep on tightening this thing until there is no gap here. Is it moving? No, no. This seems to be it. Maybe like one eighth of the turn. Yeah. That, that seems to be the whole assembly like this. And then I will connect the motor here. Then I will have to manage these wires. Okay, so now I will have to install the motor. So I'm on the side with the one T knot. And let's see how difficult it would be to. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be too difficult. So, uh, I'm just gonna uh, grab M uh, M12 by five at the top, and this just goes in here. Okay, so that's holding. I'm not gonna tighten this, and then I'm going to turn this around. So, so I'm going to move this like so, then grab a M5 by 16. Looks like M5 by 16 didn't come in this kit, but I've been doing 3D printing for a while. This one should fit. This bolt might be a bit too big for this whole thing. And before I even try to uh, move this bolt, I need to move the knot in place. So it go, it's gonna go like this. The only thing I don't like, it's kind of, everything is sort of moving at an angle here. So I'm afraid this thing might kind of go the wrong way. So let's see how badly this is going to go. Oh, okay. So there's a bit, there's a bit of slack. This um, shaft uh, hole through which M5 uh, bolt goes through, it's not uh, tight. So there's some wiggle room. So this is fine. I'm not tightening it too much. Okay, so now we have that. Uh, now we can get to the point of yeah, so my thing is completely different. So I have my 
three bearing holders. And I will need M, uh, six M3 by 25 screws. So yeah, I guess this is not included in the kit. This is my 25 millimeter screws. And uh, this plate goes like so. No, like so T towards the, this hole towards the end stop because this thing doesn't go all the way. I will have to be pretty careful when tightening. Yeah, I just want to quickly go and make sure, yeah, the, the, this rail will have uh, one bearing and this rail will have two installation. I think uh, I will also use um, washers because here I have holes that's, that are extra big. The marker should be facing the table. So there's the marker. How, this is how it looks on uh, the print or at least uh, on the print with my resolution. So markers are facing this way. We need to ensure that um, bearing is at uh, 45 degrees. This one is at 45 degrees. This one doesn't seem like it is, but I can rotate. Yeah, the problem is I also grease them. So yeah, this one now looks like it's 45 degrees. And this one, yeah, because of all the grease, we don't see the degrees. So one with a dot facing this way and two of these facing this way. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go one at a time. Okay, I'll just screw them in without actually tightening them. There is some play, but this thing in general holds together. Let's do the other two now. And I'm just uh, screwing this part in by hand so washers are held down by the gravity and then I can do, have a little boost with using a drill bit okay oh wait I did not check that uh, the uh, yeah uh, the uh, mark is on the wrong side of course i'm not sure what the mark supposed to mean it says i might have issues later with heated beds so okay the thing is my heated bed is not like the heated bed 
in the real Prusa printer. So I don't know if, if it's going to happen, if anything is going to happen here, but you know, counting the number of times I had to redo this already. Uh, let's just Let's just follow the orders. So I'm just gonna put it right here. Done. Okay, just checking one more time. Yeah, there, there is the mark. I'm just putting this thing down. So okay, I'm not tightening. I'm not tightening it, so this thing is still wobbling, but not too much. Okay, the last one, and this one should be easy. It's just mark is on this side, same as this one, and just uh, rinse and repeat. Okay, I'm at the point where I'm getting some resistance, I'm just gonna bring the bolts closer to enough. Let's go to the next step. Okay, take your time with this step. It is important that it, it is done correctly or this can cause issues with the late, uh, issues later with your printer. Do not over tighten the bearings or you may cause permanent damage to them. Start tightening evenly, incrementally, and turn the M3 by 25 screws. Why tightening test if the bearing can rotate in the direction show, uh, uh, in the direction shown uh, by the red arrows. It shouldn't rotate like this. Okay, so I'm just making sure that the bearing cannot rotate and it cannot slide. Okay, now this thing no longer wobbles. Yeah, and bearing doesn't rotate. I didn't, yeah, yeah, it sits still. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to do the same thing here. Just kind of, no, that's it. This one doesn't rotate either. And let's do the last one. Yeah. Yeah, this doesn't wobble. So I think we're good. I'm not going to over tighten this. Just leave it. I'm just going to leave it like it is. Oh, and one thing I don't like is it's not aligned evenly for uh, this one. Every, everywhere else it is more or less even, but for this one it's not even, so I'm just gonna move the bearing around so it, uh, it 
kind of sits in the middle like that but now, now, now it does sit in the middle and I'm just gonna tighten, the, tighten the, this bit okay let's see if it rotates no it doesn't rotate it doesn't wobble yeah it then this seems to be oh there's teeny tiny wobble so I'm just gonna do have a uh, turn yeah this seems to be better now so let's try this one too have a turn because I, I feel something yeah now I don't feel anything and this seems to be solid In, insert the smooth rod gently insert two y axis smooth rods uh, you don't mind. Uh, yeah just be careful or uh, loosen the m5 screws for the rod holders I don't think I even need to loosen anything or maybe I do yeah I can just pull them out like that so markers on the carriage correctly positioned so yeah we should be they're here they go like that no wait they go like this so I'm just gonna put the rods through oh the grease is coming out First go in, now second go in here maybe, if I just do it carefully. Yeah, more grease. I don't see any bearings so far, so I guess we're doing good. Now I'm going to Clean out the grease. Okay. Now push on the rod holders. This is a little bit tight. I need to loosen the uh, bolts a bit so this thing moves back and forth a lot easier I'm guessing it's going to take a, a little bit of time before the before this thing stops making noise. Just uh, grease needs to work itself in a bit. Yeah, so I need to, I guess I need to retire, uh, I'm reading the instructions. I need to loosen the screws here, I guess, and see if I need to do anything. <laughs> move this thing halfway here and then tighten the screws
evenly, incrementally, and in turn. Okay. That's kind of noisy. Okay, the spacing should measure 178 millimeters. Oh, yeah, no, I don't have calipers to measure that. Mine's only go to 150. Okay, so I will need to align a bunch of stuff. And then I will need to um, install the Y holder. Yeah, I will need to install this. I'm guessing it's gonna go like so. Yeah, because it, it will need to, yeah. And after that, I will install the idler, idler, idler. And basically then I will have to align anything, zip tie any, everything, and that's going to be it for the Y axis. I align this and let's just check with the tool how close smooth rods are. They seem to be fine here. Oh. Okay, so um, there is an issue here where I still need to realign everything again. So loosen the M5 screws on the two right rod holders, you should be able to that them easily by hand, clip the Y smooth rod and carriage assembly into the Y rod holder. Okay, so yeah, I should not have loosened this one, so I'm gonna, since I haven't really moved it, I'm going to tighten it. And for this one, okay, so the uh, bearings are correct. Move the Y carriage to the back or on the whole length of the axis at least six times. Okay, so um, I don't need to use the helper for the right one. It may to realign the left smooth rod. So this one should be aligned. And it is. I need to realign this based on movement of the bearings. So, and I think, well, it's getting quieter the more I move the... Oh. So I think... So yeah, I, I need to move these, uh, tighten these incrementally. And here you see the line of grease where the um, right bearing goes to. Can. And this one is not uh, tightened, so maybe I can go all the way here and tighten it when the bearing is on this side. Check that, yeah, on the left the uh, smooth rod is aligned with the with the measuring tool. I feel like it might be a little bit tighter on this side than on this. Yeah, it's definitely. Okay, so um, I will need to do this again because the measuring tool here, it, um, it, it doesn't go all the way as it goes on this side so it means that the bed is not uh, it means that the bed is not aligned like this it's more like this so um, I'm going to loosen uh, 
rods on the right. Just kind of bump them up when I'm going to move rods on the left. And now uh, on the left, I'm just going to insert the tool, loosen them here, and and move them around. Move them around so tool kind of goes all the way in like this because it used to just kind of stand like this, but it should go all the way here. I'm I'm kind of I'm exaggerating movement a little bit so it's visible on the camera. And now uh, I'm going to tighten this. Make sure that. Uh, uh, there is like the same pressure on the tool along the whole smooth rod. Now let's try and see how this thing is going to look on the other side. Yeah, it's about the same. Now, and now I can uh, adjust this side so the the smooth rods and the bearings are aligning. So I'm tightening everything. And this thing seems to be a uh, uh, moving smoothly. So yeah, I don't have 200 millimeter caliper. I will have to just um, keep going. And now I need to align the... Um, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, turn the printer around and I need to align the... the motor mount. And for a motor mount, first I'm going to do a little bit of uh, cable management and I'll move the this cable down. I guess uh, I can move the motor. Uh, should I do that? Uh, I guess I, uh, one thing that I did not do quite correctly, I uh, moved the motor so the cables from the optional fan are uh, looking this way. And connector for the motor is on the opposite side. And I'm going to fix that. And I think um, it's been held at the bottom with the, with the screw that didn't come in the kit. So I'm going to remove that one too. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep this bolt in here because it doesn't um, help me removing it. And this is my little hack on cooling the motors. And uh, what I think I initially I did wrong is um, I put uh, a fan cable uh, in a different spot, in the opposite spot than the wiring for the motor. And this is bad. And I am going to change that. So uh, I'm just gonna loosen this with a screwdriver. And um, what I did, I just bought longer screws. I removed the original uh, motor screws. I bought, um, I measured how much it's going to take to um, accommodate a fan at the back. And I bought longer screws. I think these are uh, 45 millimeters uh, ones. And now uh, if I do everything correctly, uh, I shouldn't be in too much of a problem, uh, trouble. And ba basically the older 40 millimeter screws, they, they, they go somewhere up until here. This shaft here, it goes all the way through the motor. And the screws at the back uh, hold the motor together. And the shaft at the front where all the other screws are mounted are just there to mount kind of like all the accessories. So uh, I'm just going to loosen all of the screws and then use my uh, electric screwdriver and uh, just uh, remove them. Mm -hmm. 
okay and if I just pry um, if I try to pry this thing open uh, I'm not gonna do it just motor comes off um, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to open it then accidentally break it and the the fan I'm using is oh there's some uh, kind of oil here and you know wh while um, I'm kind of servicing this thing I am going to do one more thing I'm gonna get my dental tool out and I'm gonna get some grease since uh, I use this fan for quite a bit already, I'm just going to add some grease by lifting this cover here. This is a 24 uh, volt motor and he here we have our bearing and it still has lots of grease, but uh, I'm just gonna uh, give it another drop of um, a wet bicycle lube. <laughs> give it two drops, seal it back and that should be good for a couple of years. And I'm just going to okay so we greased the bearing and now I'm I want to clean up the remaining maybe I would also do the same thing for the bearing here, just one drop, and uh, I'll just put the wiring this way, and put the put the screws back on. And then tighten everything by hand. Let me see where this is the wrong one. This is the wrong one. Oh, I, I, I don't have uh, to uh, like a proper tool for M3 screws. I just have this driver driver bit, which is fine. Did I tighten this one? No, I don't think so. I'm just gonna loosen it a little bit so the screw will go in more evenly. Put the frame upright. And then just tighten the slightly tighten the top screw. Then, yeah, I guess move the frame like so, and then attempt to tighten the bottom screw. So, oh, okay, I have a problem now. Now I tighten the bottom screw, and I didn't check if the T nut was there. Need to move the T nut around a bit so it aligns. Oh, okay, uh, it looks like that I need to like revert to my original method and just kind of. Remove the screw. I know it's not gonna get stuck, so yeah, let's let's just do this thing correctly. So I will completely remove the screw. Then I will check that that the D nut aligns with the hole. As you may see, it's not aligning with the hole. So is this better? No, I am moved it too far. Yeah. Like, okay, now it's roughly aligning with the hole here. And then I'm going to put the screw in. 
and then I'm going to try and tighten it. Okay, that works. Oh, actually wait, I don't need to tighten it completely. I still need to move the whole mount a bit. So yeah, it's holding it, but it's, oh. Yeah, I think I tightened the top knot way too much at this point. So I'm going to loosen that. As you can see here, we have our cables coming from the bottom for the fan and for the uh, motor and uh, the other cable for the end stop is coming from the top so here i need to now loosen this i can move around the motor mount um, and then i will need to um, align it i'm going to do this in the reverse first i'm going to align motor mount because um, I don't need to swap the frame around. So, okay, let, let's get the uh, cabling out of the way. So it's gonna have to be 61.5 millimeters from uh, Y motor mount. And this is like, oh, this is going to be quite far. Okay, so this is 65 and we're getting somewhere around here. Sixty one point five. Yeah, somewhere here. So I'm going to tighten it. Tighten this uh, screw. Let's measure this again. Yeah, that looks like sixty one point five. I'm going to tighten the screw a bit more. Let's see if yeah, we should, if everything is not interfering. I will need to do some cable cable managing and kind of make sure that the um, uh, that the wires from the end stop don't interfere with. Um, uh, carriage and now I'm gonna flip the bed this way and tighten the bottom screw here okay now let's see how we're doing with the alignment. This still looks like 61 and a half. Uh, the, the, the only thing I am concerned with is that um, I'm using the uh, the old uh, end stop, uh, the, the old uh, uh, holders. So I'm gonna go and um, uh, I'm gonna go to the source code of uh, I'm gonna go to the source code of the uh, bear upgrade and let's go to the uh, we have, do we have tags? Let's go to version zero and let's go to the full upgrade. And uh, yeah, I think instructions are going to be somewhere else. Uh, doc. The problem is also the um, the design of this part may have changed. I think these rods are for Mark II, and these new designs are for Mark III only. So um, I'm gonna go to the. Uh, GitHub. Let's look at uh, printed parts. I may have printed. So uh, this is the new one for Mark II. There is no uh, smooth rod holder. Uh, there's only common version. And I think this might be wrong because uh, what we actually need is uh, Mark II version.
but still this does not solve the problem of my um, smooth rods being uh, about uh, 20 millimeters too long so for these they're perfectly fine so um, this thing is 36 millimeters so each of the uh, Uh, rod holders are 36 millimeters here and this rod holder is 52 millimeters so uh, I'm just gonna write it down in a notepad okay right okay so we have this now uh, let's do a bit of math uh, and uh, see what we need to have what kind of devel uh, what kind of offset we're, we need to get here so we're trying to align this thing uh, on the motor side we are measuring this distance so and the value that we have is 61.5 uh, millimeters now um, let's get the value of, of the length from center of the rod uh, to the left which is half, so uh, V 2.1 half is going to be uh, 30, um, 15 plus uh, 3, 18 millimeters. Uh, half is going to be 25 plus 1, 20, 26 millimeters. So, um, 26 minus 18 equals to uh, 8 millimeters. Old uh, motor mount diff is going to, do, to be 61.5 minus 8 millimeters which is going to um, be 53 here the offset is going to be 50 53 so this is 53 and a bit I think I need 53 and a bit more yeah 53 and a bit so I'm going to tighten this while my calipers there somewhere. Tighten this here. And this is flexible. The diameter from here. So I'll just tighten this. Yeah, that still looks like 53 and a half. So this seems to be fine. Now let's do uh, Y. And so for a uh, Y idler mount, I just need to do 47 minus 8, which is going to be 39 millimeters. Okay, this, is, this looks like 39. No, oh, this one doesn't look straight. not didn't appear to be seated properly I think I fixed it there's one more knot here at the bottom yeah like here I'm gonna tighten it too and let's measure this whole thing again Thirty-nine millimeters. Yeah, that's about. I think thirty-nine point one. Not gonna worry too much about uh, this kind of tolerance. So um, now we're moving on to uh, belt holder installation. So uh, we'll need to, two M three by twelve, and then M three uh, hex knot.
belt holder like this and and it will press here I need 12 millimeter which is this one and two hex nuts Now these are going to be removed when installing heated bed. Uh, this is temporary. I'm not so sure that in my case this is temporary at all. Okay, so let's try this. Just gonna screw this long enough that it sticks out just a little bit so I can mount this thing on. on the bed uh, and since I don't know how temporary the how temporary this thing is going to be <clears throat> this bit goes towards the motor okay that seems to be being in the right place I want to put a washer here Just in case. Just in case this temporary thing becomes permanent. Okay, so it's been held together. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. washer here and then put a knot in on top of it try to twist it a little bit and then just keep keep twisting the bolt so there is like enough threads for not to catch on okay so I'm not going to tighten, I think this is good enough, I, I'm just tightening it by, uh, with my fingers. I think we'll have to tighten this thing later on as after the belt is put onto this. Okay, so now we have this. Check the orientation of uh, Y belt holder. In, in, in that system, uh, bed is uh, screwed uh, directly into the um, holder. Since I'm using like the really old non -umbered. I can demonstrate. This is one of the spare beds that I have. It has one screw in the middle which doesn't align with anything. And here I kind of insulated things. So this is not, this is not going to work for me. Uh, and what I need to do is um, screw this in impermanently. Maybe I can even use something uh, smaller to save some space. What I want to do is get it through all, all of the way in and then see how far this bolt sticks out and maybe I should use like 10 millimeters. So here the bolt sticks out way farther than uh, it needs to because um, different design. So uh, I'm gonna try and use 10 millimeter. This is going to be perfect. It's going to be flush. So the uh, belt holder goes in like this. I should look and now I'm going to um, put a washer before I uh, add a knot. There's uh, three quarters of the thread that's been engaged. Nothing's going to be sticking out. It, it's just going to be perfectly flush even with a, um, a, a, an extra washer. So like this, then like this and I'm going to hold this knot and manually tighten bolt. Oh, 
screwdriver is a bit too big and manually tighten the bolt on the other side or maybe you just hold the bolt bolt and tighten the knot a bit like this it doesn't have to be too tight okay yeah it's not going anywhere okay that's done uh, The belt holder engages the end stop, we should be good. So I already uh, installed the uh, knot in there, uh, the square knot. Uh, now I did uh, this bit with the tensioner. Uh, I want to see how, how long uh, will the 3D printed tensioner last. Let's find out. We're on the, the step here. Remove uh, the M25 screw. So that, that would be this one. So now I need to insert the tensioner into the mount. Let's see how that's going to look. So it uh, goes like this. And I should probably pull the belt through it first. It's probably going to make my life e a lot easier. I haven't had any washers there, so let me add the washer to the M25. It goes in through here. And then I insert this thing here. Let's hope that uh, it's aligned properly. And yeah, when I'm, when I look at the top from the top, I can see the uh, the hole for the knot on the side. So uh, in the meantime, I'm just kind of tightening up the uh, M25 knot. Maybe I should do it with the tool to speed things up a little bit. Now I need to get an M3 block knot and M3 by 30 uh, screw. So the block knot goes in here. I don't want the same thing ha that happened last time happen right now. So let me just get the 30 millimeter screw in and tedious okay maybe maybe I can cheat slightly and use a bit that I can turn on an angle without ruining everything so let me try and cheat at least with the right tool so I can do this So let me try and attach the knot to it. And see if I can now align it with the uh, bit that is here and kind of pull it in as I'm tightening the Screw. Maybe I should hold it with this instead of just a piece of pliers. Maybe too late, and I, I may already ruin this. Uh. 
I hope that I tighten this thing enough so uh, I don't have to deal with that anymore. But uh, it is likely that um, if I want to ever do anything with this, it's probably um, I have to remove the whole assembly and um, redo it. I'm, I'm looking for uh, this trade bit, which I hope I didn't, yeah, which turned out to be a lot harder than the bolt, so I can, at least I didn't break it. And I'm just gonna try and tighten it uh, using this. If I can. it I want to tighten it no no right, right now the um, the socket here is completely gone so this is what we have and we're not gonna get any more of it but on, on the upside um, this bolt is holding, so uh, uh, the rest of the thing might actually just work. I may need to clean up some uh, chains here. We're looking at about three millimeter gap, so I think I need to um, I need to tighten this quite a bit. Three millimeter, ex almost exactly. So I'm gonna call this one a partial success. So after we've done that, and now uh, I'm going to take the belt, move it through here. The belt goes like this with the belt thread here, and then I'll just stick it in the Teeth there. Okay, now got it here. And then I move it through the motor mount and the same thing here. Like this. Oh, this is such. Is, this is so much better than the uh, default Prusa Mark II way of handling it. It's just, and I don't have to tension it a lot because I, I, I mean, I can try and tension it by hand. But if um, actually let me um. So that, that I have a bit more room, I'm gonna loosen. Uh, I'm going to loosen this part a bit. I think I can get a um, couple of more millimeters out of this. So I'm gonna loosen this. Like that, it's still holding. Now I'm gonna try and stick as much of a belt through here. Uh. 
like so. Uh, maybe I can use nose of these pliers to kind of stick the belt deeper. Uh, I'm just going to use a thinner bed from my driver set. Yeah, there we go. Yes, this is so much better. Okay, so we have that. Uh, and I will need to... Um, uh, let's see, that belt is fully inserted into the slot. Now I'm going to uh, tighten that bed. The motor is really twisted badly. I, I need to move the uh, that thing on the motor. I'm running out of words, but I think that that thing on the motor sums it up. Okay, done that. We're doing that. And now we're moving the motor. So uh, I'm trying to align it so there is a bit of room on each side of the belt so this seems to be fine let me check if this is so that seemed to be aligned much better except this this is not aligned and i need to move this bit a little bit in this direction until, until everything aligns so that, that's why there is a hole here so I can loosen the screw in here and I can loosen the screws at the top and then I can slowly move the belt until it aligns more or less and just a little bit more like this Just looking for any way to... Okay, there we go. So it seems to be aligned here. And for the motor... It seems to be aligned on the side of the... Actually, it's a little bit... I, I can move the motor head. I don't know, a little bit. I think uh, I, sh I still have a little bit of room to move the um, the coupling on the motor. Loosen these screws here and here. Then I'm, I'm moving the coupling, and then I'm tightening this the nuts again. So maybe now the this thing looks even. I'm gonna move Idler a little bit to the right from where we're looking. I see what's going on. I, I think I did not completely move the um, belt in, in, in there, so it's uh, um, sticking out a little bit. So I'm going to leave this as is. I don't think it makes any difference right now. I'm going to loosen this knot. Then I'm going to get the smallest driver bit that I have. 
and just press it in here because I think I did not press in the belt enough. I was worried about this side, but I wasn't worried about this side. And in the end, this side is one that is kind of sticking out. Um, okay, now I'm going to tighten this back again. Now I'm, go I'm gonna see how this thing looks now. And now it looks like I may need to move this a little bit to the... Uh, I think it's fine. I don't think it's within the tolerances. So now we're going to, to we're gonna go to the last step of yeah, so basically the, we were doing this uh, step, except I should um, tension the belt first. Oh, and I think this is as far as it goes. I don't think the belt is tight enough. If there are issues with Y-axis, I may need to revisit it, but so far it seems okay.